Hello everyone, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Today we're going to go ahead and dive into the depths of my approach. I'm going to go ahead and share with you all the approach that I take specific to go ahead and pull nice, consistent, smooth, one pass of lines. Now I often get asked my approach and you know how I pull lines. It's a lot to answer via you know comment section or just in text in general. So I figured I'd actually take some time and make an in-depth video and share with you all my approach. Let you all see up close what I am doing. I'm going to share my thought process and anything else along the way that I feel could be of use and of value to you on your end. Now, I'm going to be using this small piece of real skin right here. I will leave links in the description below for you so you can check this out. I've also made in-depth reviews on this skin right here. And I'm also going to be using the CNC X1 with a wireless power supply right here as well just to demonstrate. Now, with that being said, I'm going to bring you up close and we're going to take a first-hand look at how I pull lines. I'm going to talk throughout the process and I'm going to let you all know what I'm doing and thinking along the way. So let's dive into that. Now, before we begin, I'm going to show you a couple of needle configurations that I have here. I have a standard seven round liner. This is a T-Rex by Ambition. This one is going to be a Big Wasp, as you can see, double zero, 11 round liner, long taper. And then this one's going to be a Big Wasp, double zero, 13 round shader, as you can see right there, medium taper. So I have three different configurations. Now, one thing that I want to point out prior to actually jumping into the lining is that the approach would pretty much be the same. Meaning when I'm lining with a round liner versus lining with a round shader, um, the thought process and technique and approach is pretty much identical. Nothing really changes besides the feel of each individual needle. I kind of adjust to the figure, uh, the, I'm sorry, I kind of adjust to the configuration accordingly, which is something that comes more um, natural than can be, I guess, like taught. I can pinpoint and show you what I'm talking about here in this video, but I just wanna point out before we continue, you can align with a seven round liner, you can align with an 11 round liner, you can align with a 13 round shader, you can align with an 18 round shader. The choice is gonna be up to you and your technical ability and your technical capabilities. So let's bring you up close here and let's go ahead and begin pulling some lines so I can explain more on the thought process behind it. So here we are up close and I have the different needles. For me, I'm gonna begin with the 11 round liner. I will also demonstrate and show you how I pull lines with the round shader, just to kind of touch base on that so you can see it real time here as well. And this one's going to be, again, the double zero Big Boss 11 round liner. And right now I'm running at 7.5 volts. That's where I am going to keep my voltage at. So I'm just going to go ahead and begin by moistening my tattoo site area. Now when I pull lines, it just depends on the design. Like, See how there is ink pulling out of the cartridge on the side? I typically don't ever want to collect enough ink to pull out. Let me see if I can demonstrate that a little bit better. So as you see right here, the ink is kind of filling up to the maximum capacity and if I turn it, you can see there's a bulb of ink on the side right here which is something I'm not a fan of because that bleeds off onto my tattoo site. So when I pull lines, I like to be mindful of how much ink I actually draw into my tube. So I always start off with a little bit less and I never really max out my ink storage in my tip cartridge because I like to see where my needle point is at. I don't like for my ink to be pulling up under and to avoid that, I never fill up my ink to the top. I'll literally just dip in the tip of my tube and leave it in there for a moment and take it out and then continue accordingly and then just A and B it through the entire tattoo. So when I am pulling lines, as you can see though, let me zoom in right here. As you can see, that's my needle hang. That's how far I feel comfortable hanging out my needle and that's my approach. This is going to vary. I personally do not like to ride the tube. And again, that goes back to, I like my tattoo site to be as clean as possible, even throughout the entire process. I try to um, keep, you know, clean, uh, you know, neatness in mind as well upon the process. So as you can see, that's where my needle hangs. And I have my middle finger at the tip right here. So that way my middle finger sits before my needle touches, if you can see. So my needle finger, my middle finger is sitting down and my needle is not yet touching. And this for me is what helps me guide my needle where I need. And then my thumb is what helps me keep a consistent depth, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pull a line. And when I pull a line, I'm always looking for that point. So I broke in the dermis and that's the point that I look for. I always look for that feeling, that resistance there. And if I wipe away, you can see we have a nice, clean, saturated dot, as you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I'm gonna hit the dermis 
and I'm gonna slowly pull my line in the direction that I need depending on the design, making sure that I'm still feeling that resistance all the way through that resistance and that consistency because that resistance is helping me or feeling for that resistance is helping me keep my consistency so as you can see i'm running it like that and then i'm going to go ahead and just repeat the process find the dermis and then i'm staying consistent as you can see my fingers resting and my needles pulling go ahead and tap up as you can see these are nice one pass clean saturated lines now Let's say if I wasn't consistent with the hand speed and my depth because the voltage of my machine is important with the depth of the needle and my hand speed. All of these variables are to be considered. Let's say if these were out of the line, let's say even if one of them was out of the line, we're not going to get a one pass line. We're going to get a line that looks more something like this. Something like that when it's healed. So you can see the difference. Most people that I've seen tattoo will typically like as if they're drawing white next line and the entire tattoo is like that as you can see now don't get me wrong at a distance they may look like lines however there's a dramatic difference between saturated and non-saturated between the non-saturated lines you can see the needle tip and texture there that is not what i want within my tattoos that's not what i'm going for now again i'm at 7.5 volts so three main variables that I am considering upon tattooing is my voltage, I'm considering the needle hang, and then how far my needle goes into the skin, the needle depth. So these are just three important things that I'm considering, as well as I'm always trying to find the most comfortable spot to pull the line upon pulling the line. So let's say if I'm tattooing like an arm, a forearm, or a wrist, or something where there's a lot of concave and or creases, I'm always looking for ways to be super comfortable before I even pull the line. Sometimes it'll take me a little longer. As you can see, I'm slowing down my hand speed to match the voltage. As you can see, we're getting nice one pass lines there. These are really nice saturated lines. So if this was on human skin, this would be a really nice line. And again, my voltage and my hand speed is my voltage and my hand speed that I'm comfortable with. Some of you may vary some of you may be more comfortable pulling lines at eight volts moving a little bit more faster and that's fine um this is basically just my thought process and approach so each line that i'm pulling behind it i'm making sure that these variables are there so my comfortability is basically the first thing that comes into play so now that i'm comfortable i can begin to go ahead and pull the line so then i'm going to find the dermis i'm going to remain consistent and then i'm going to go ahead and pull my lines nice slow and steady all the way through As you can see, that was a consistent pass and we put a little bit of Vaseline to wipe away any excess that may exist. And as you can see though, that is what's there for life now. That is not gonna come out. If this was on human skin, I would feel comfortable that this tattoo is going to hold up the test of time. And again, it's just repeating that process. You see how my ink is pulling? Sometimes it can happen, sometimes we can manage. I didn't put a little bit more than I wanted, but you get my drift. So as you can see though, it's very straightforward. I'm making sure that I'm getting comfortable with where the tip of my needle is. And that's the point and exercise of pulling lines like this. You just wanna be able to move any direction with that needle. And when you're doing that, making sure that your lines are coming out like that. Nice, clean, saturated, complete. There's no chops or skips. Like, let me see if I can create a chop or skip. See, like that just doesn't feel natural to me. And even doing that, that may have blown up the skin and or keloid or scarred the skin right here just because of how hard I press and how fast I move. Um, this is not going to sit right with skin. You kind of want to move at a consistent uh, pace here. Now for me, the voltage is 7.5 and moving at this hand speed works well. Every tattoo that I've ever done on human skin healed with no texture, um, there's no raises or anything, any abnormal or abnormalities of such within my healed work. I will also be uh, bringing a video on more of my healed work for you all to check out. But for now, this is the thought process and approach behind pulling nice one pass lines. It really is a matter of also being comfortable with your gear that you're using. That's also a big, big variable to consider. And this is just after a lot of time of pulling lines and practicing. But as you can see though, this is the 11 round liner. This is a, a double zero and everything is fine. 
I personally like to hang my needles because I trust my ability to stay consistent when I hit the right depth. I never have a problem with really ever going too deep. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm inserting the ink. Nice, consistent. And what I'm gonna do is show you all the after. So as you can see, let me, for those who may be a little skeptical, I am fully wiping. I'm gonna put a whole chunk of Vaseline on here. We're gonna really wipe the excess off here. So that way you all can really see what's actually staying. And you can see I'm really pulling on this skin. So that is there permanently. That's what we have for life. They're, they read really, really nice. Zoom it in, they're, they're nice clean saturated lines now that's how i would approach it with round liners and honestly to, to meet in the middle it's really not much different approaching it with round shaders the only thing that would really change is the depth of the needle how deep you go as well as the configuration that you were using so right now we were using the double zero 11 round liner from big wasp we're going to go ahead and jump into the big wasp double zero 13 round shader i just want to shed a little insight on how i go about um pulling lines with the round shader. So let's go ahead and get that loaded and we can proceed accordingly. So for the round shader, we're gonna be pushing at 7.5 volts as well. And as you can see, my hang is around that much. That may be a little too much for my personal liking. So I'm gonna take it in just one or two notches. So I just took it in a couple of notches. And as you can see, this is where my needle's hanging right here. Now, if you ever experience a wobble within your needle, it's probably because it's hanging out too far. So. That's just a little tip there. If you're ever um, pulling a line and your needle skips, it may be um, the cartridge itself or because your needle is hanging too far out. So this is basically the hang that I'm gonna use for now. And with that being said, I like to work off the tip of my needles. Nothing changes from round liners to round shaders. Again, besides the configuration and the mild hand speed as well. So as you can see, I'm going to find the dermis the same. And I can feel the difference in resistance between the larger round shader versus the round liner. So let's go ahead and proceed and pull a line with the round shader here. Get a little bit more light on this. So I found that sweet spot. And as you can see, I'm keeping the same depth and same consistency, but my hand speed fluctuates according to the needle configuration at hand. So that way I make sure I'm getting a nice full saturated line with this bigger configuration. Let's go ahead and refocus. And as you can see, we're getting, again, nice, smooth, one pass, full saturated lines. Very nice, very clean. We're gonna proceed accordingly and we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna find that resistance, hit that dermis. Take our time to pull these lines too slow. You may risk scarring and giving the skin um, textures upon healing too fast you're going to risk not going dark enough and you're not going to get nice one pass saturated lines and as you can see if these were lines on human skin i wouldn't need to go over any of them they would have all hit the first time and stayed there for life i'm very very confident that these lines would have held up the test of time and you would just repeat that process over and over and over and as you can see though the only thing that really changes is the voltage for the bigger configuration making sure that i'm really saturating the line in there and I feel that this movement should feel natural. The ratio between speed to voltage should come natural. If it feels abnormal then, or you're like a trying too hard, then you may want to tune the settings to something that's a bit more appropriate for the feel that you're going for. So as you can see right there, very nice. And we're doing this over and over and over again, showing you all consistency here. As you see, they're very nice and smooth lines. <clears throat> Moving too fast would result in this. So let me find that sweet spot. That, even moving too fast, we, we would technically be cutting the skin, so we risk damaging the skin moving too fast. Moving too slow, we, miss, we risk also risk damaging the skin and scarring. So again, that balance between hand speed and voltage is super important. And I think that's one of the keys or one of the many keys to pulling nice one pass lines. It's not like I can just say, this is what you have to do and this is how you would do it. This is just how I go about doing it. And these are the things that I think about and these are the variables that I use to go ahead and achieve these results for you all. Or to achieve these results rather that I'm showing here to you all. So again, as you can see, just a bigger configuration. You just adjust accordingly. You may move slower. If this was a 
for example, a three round liner, then I'm gonna move a bit faster than that. I'm not gonna move that slow with a three round liner. I think that the bigger the configuration goes in terms of, if you're gonna align with it, then the slower you would wanna go. The smaller the configuration is, the you know more swifter you can move your hand. That's how I see it. So as you can see though, every line that we've pulled, we've gotten it first try and each line with the round shader and round liner have been saturated. Let me go ahead and use the last of the ink right here. So as you can see though, let me actually wipe off the excess so we can take a real close first hand look here at the results. So as you can see, this is what we are left with. These are the results. And as you can see though, these are nice, smooth, one pass lines. Everything came out smooth, everything came out nice, and everything came out saturated and consistent. Um, inconsistent line, I'm sorry, inconsistent lines really, really show in the tattoos, which is why I feel um, knowing how to pull nice one pass lines is very, very important because you're going to know what to look for in the tattoo process. When you know what you're looking for, you don't have to wing it. When you don't have to wing it, you can have that much more confidence. And that much more confidence will show in the quality of the work that you were doing. So I hope that that makes sense. I hope that, um, you know, that's something that you can take from me. I hope that there's something that you can take from this video here. But that's basically my approach. That's my thought process behind it. I just consider multiple variables in terms of how far my needle hangs out um, upon or before pulling the line the uh, feeling for that resistance, the consistency that I'm um, utilizing upon feeling for that resistance, and just an overall approach for lining. That, that's how I do it in a nutshell. That's overall how I would go about pulling nice full one, or no, I'm sorry, nice full saturated one pass lines. Just to reiterate, it is uh, coming down to how far my needle hangs out. That has to be just right. It comes down to my voltages that I'm using. Me personally, I use a short style pin tattoo machine, so I run at 7.5 typically. And I, um, you have to match that voltage with your hand speed as well as that consistency and needle depth. So you can see that there's multiple variables to be considered upon pulling lines with any tattoo machine. Now, with that being said, yet again, I hope that there's something that you can learn from this. I kind of figured that with the round shader and 11 round liner, we can kind of get the idea and get the gist of it. If there's anything that I didn't touch base on or if there's anything specific that you may have wanted to know at any point throughout this video, please feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'm going to do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. If you're not, be sure to go ahead and give me a follow on social medias as I do have social medias all under the same name under Daniel Yuck. That would be D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K as I would genuinely appreciate your support on there. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell as I'm going to be bringing a lot more videos like this. Thank you for tuning in yet again. Y'all have a great day.